25% of advisors have been asked in the last month about crypto. So at least one in four just this month has been asked, hey, why aren't you buying me crypto? I hear there are these, these things coming out. So, so all of that conspires to let's just do simple math. Let's say it's 10 basis points. It's a reasonable expectation. Just dip your toe in 10 basis points. That's $30 billion on an asset that trades $8 billion a day. Now, to Michael's point, if, if BlackRock does have the $2 billion, which I have no doubt they, they do, and they try to put it all in tomorrow, price can jump a lot. The past 40 hours have been truly unforgettable and historic for Bitcoin and the broader digital assets industry. On Wednesday, after over a decade of persistent denials and more recently, months of back and forth with applicants, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission finally granted approval to 11 spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds. The successful applicants include Grayscale, BlackRock, Fidelity, Franklin Templeton, Bidwise, HHEX, Valkyrie, ARK Invest, Invesco, Galaxy Van Eck, and Wisdom Tree. In the official announcement, the SEC stated that, after careful review, the Commission finds the proposals consistent with the Exchange Act and relevant regulations applicable to a national securities exchange. The documents also noted that fraud or manipulation affecting prices in spot Bitcoin markets would likely impact Bitcoin futures prices similarly. This approval is a direct reference to a judge's ruling in Grayscale's lawsuit against the SEC when the Commission initially denied the conversion of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust into a spot Bitcoin ETF. The judge ruled that there was no valid reason to deny a spot Bitcoin ETF on the grounds of fraud and market manipulation, especially when the SEC had already approved Bitcoin futures ETFs facing similar risks. Despite any reservations, all 11 Bitcoin ETFs are now live, collectively recording billions of dollars in trading volume within the first few hours of launch. According to Mark Yusko, a renowned hedge fund manager and crypto enthusiast, this is just the beginning of significant accomplishments. Yusko believes that the current billions in trading volume could easily escalate to hundreds of billions, possibly before the end of the bull market. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Advisors, Merrill Lynch, UBS, etc., Schwab, Independence, uh, control about $30 trillion. Yeah. Okay, it's a big number. Mm -hmm. And the average advisor today has sub 3% exposure to cryptocurrencies. And the vast majority of that is in companies like MicroStrategy, et cetera, that, that own it. 91% of advisors say their most important asset for managing client assets are ETFs, not mutual funds. That's you know 20 years ago, um, not single stocks and bonds. That's 30 years ago. It is ETFs. And so when you combine an underweight, a massive underweight to digital assets, whereas you know the vast majority of that $30 trillion has zero exposure. Let's just do simple math. Let's say it's 10 basis points. Okay, it's a reasonable expectation. Just dip your toe in 10 basis points. That's $30 billion on an asset that trades $8 billion a day. Now, to Michael's point, if, if BlackRock does have the $2 billion, which I have no doubt they, they do, and they try to put it all in tomorrow, price can jump a lot. We, we can't take... Three, I, th I actually think three and a half billion is going to trade tomorrow. That, that's been my number for a while. At day one, three and a half billion will come in. That's, that's a problem. So, I mean, a good problem. But the, the, rea the reality is it's not going to be 10 basis points. Let's say it's 100 basis points. 1%, which is not, not a crazy number. Now you're talking 300 billion, not tomorrow, but over some period of time, again, to Michael's point, it'll take some time to educate and have some fancy ads and all that good stuff. Once UBS and Merrill put it in the model portfolio, it's over. You don't have a choice as an advisor to not have it, right? As a fiduciary, as a member of the team, you you have to do that. Now, there's no, you know, in the old days, it used to be you had to buy the one that they got paid the most by. So a little kickback going on. But and that may still happen. But now you got 11 choices. And 
there's going to be money that's going to go into these things and it's going to be big. Here's a crazy stat. BITO raised a billion dollars on day one. 950 million, call it a billion. Today has 2 billion, despite the fact that they're down 31% since inception. And they were down 75, but they came back a little. But that's a, that's a, so think about, that's a crappy structure, right? It's got negative roll yield, all the, it's, it's a crappy structure, bad performance, and yet it's still, attracted more than $2 billion because the billion turned into 300 million. And then they raised another probably billion and that then doubled. I guess they raised about 700 million and that doubled to 2 billion. The launch of the approved Bitcoin exchange traded products has sent shockwaves through the financial landscape, marking an extraordinary milestone. In an impressive display of investor enthusiasm, all 11 ETFs collectively amassed a staggering $1.2 billion in trading volume within the first 30 minutes of their introduction, reaching nearly $2 billion within the initial hour. Grayscale led the charge with $446 million, closely followed by BlackRock, Fidelity, and ARK Invest. This unparalleled success reflects a strong affirmation from the market, underscoring the growing significance of Bitcoin within mainstream financial portfolios. Bloomberg analyst James Sart highlighted this achievement as record-shattering, emphasizing the profound impact of the spot Bitcoin ETFs on the industry. A subsequent update revealed that the total trading volume for the entire group, excluding GBTC, surpassed $4.6 billion on the first day. Notably, BlackRock emerged as a leader with a trading volume exceeding a billion dollars. This unprecedented trading activity has not only showcased the immediate success of the ETFs but also ignited discussions about the potential for even more substantial growth in the digital asset market. Amidst the celebration of this groundbreaking success, Sartre speculated on the origin of the trading volume, hinting at a significant influx of new investments. Meanwhile, Mark Yusko, a seasoned hedge fund manager, expressed optimism about the future, envisioning a transition from billions to hundreds of billions in trading volume, possibly before the conclusion of the ongoing bull market. The launch of spot Bitcoin ETFs has undeniably set a new standard for the industry, paving the way for increased institutional involvement and further establishing Bitcoin as a formidable asset class within the broader financial landscape. Look, we had two flushes. I mean, two serious liquidity flushes in the past week, you know, one on the matrix port and then the second on the oops, you know, put in the wrong day for the, the tweet um, or, or whatever it was. Um, I don't really care, but actually I do care because I actually think it was intentional. I actually think it was a trial run for what's going to happen what? tomorrow, which that's the sinister part that scares me. I actually think it was a trial run for the short side. Well, absolutely, the SEC looks idiotic, right? I mean, you can't even protect your own social media account. And and the thing that's so funny is when they tried to make it about crypto, and say, look, the crypto market is manipulated. Like, Really, if you did that same thing with Microsoft or NVIDIA or any other public company, the same damn thing would have happened. Don't don't say that was a crypto thing. That was a Wall Street thing. This was like when FTX went down and they're like, it's a crypto problem. I'm like, no, that's a bad person doing bad things problem. That had nothing to do with crypto. I mean, that's what you know the guys in the SNL crisis did. That's what the guys in the junk bond crisis did. Bad people do bad things. So I, I think crypto, they try to make us look bad all the time. Ultimately, the reason the media, okay, which is controlled by the same people that control finance, are going to paint this industry negatively at every chance is blockchain technology and crypto, Bitcoin, et cetera, does to financial services what the internet did to media and commerce. Full stop. And there's no way to stop it, right? I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum on Saturdays, is banks had an 838-year run. It's over. Now, it won't end tomorrow, but the 838-year monopoly on trust, it's over. I mean, it's over. And so as we do the X, Right. As we go from one monopoly to another monopoly, which is sound real money, which can be cool in the future, that path is going to be rocky and it's going to be dotted and littered with these attacks. But clearly, the, the SEC, I mean, they literally look like a clown show. Bitcoin, in and of itself, 
it's this amazing thing. But if if its only function is to sit on a ledger and bury it in the backyard, we can all just go home and go back to our old jobs because that we already got that. That's gold. And gold won't, you know, decay buried in the backyard like a ledger might. So that isn't what this is all about, right? What this is all about is establishing the base layer of money, replacing gold as the base layer of money in every financial institution in the world, every central bank, every you know centralized organization and decentralized organization. But the migration from centralized to decentralized is not going to happen immediately. But every time we introduce new companies to facilitate new technology, that's what I love as, as a venture capitalist is there are people building these solutions to help cross the chasm, right? Because if if you're a bank, and you're saying, well, Jesus, I, I don't really like this, the fact that I'm not necessary now. Michael can lend money to Michael without me. That's not good for me. Okay, well, how do I get in the middle of this? Okay, maybe I can be a custodian. Maybe I can be a, a record keeper. Maybe, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be functions. Um, and at least in the short term, there's going to be some role for fiat. Meanwhile, Thursday brought an unexpected turn of events for Bitcoin enthusiasts. As trading commenced, users holding brokerage accounts at Vanguard quickly discovered that they were unable to participate in the action. A customer representative later clarified that Bitcoin ETFs were not available on the platform due to their highly speculative and unregulated nature, which did not align with the company's long-term investing philosophy. The representative emphasized Vanguard's stance against high volatility and noted that the platform also restricted other types of investments, such as leveraged ETFs. Clients attempting to purchase shares of BlackRock's IBIT Bitcoin ETF faced similar challenges at Vanguard, where the platform indicated that securities might be unavailable for purchase due to various factors, including regulatory restrictions and corporate actions. Additionally, users interacting with JP Morgan's interface to buy BlackRock's IBIT Bitcoin ETF encountered a warning highlighting the unique risks and potential high volatility associated with cryptocurrency-linked instruments. Despite these obstacles, the overall initiation of such a historic moment was not entirely marred, prompting reflection on the implications of Mark Yusko's interview and predictions for Bitcoin and the broader digital assets space. Feel free to share your thoughts and observations in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.